management during a recession which we are going into so please manage expectations slightly likewise and then this is just a small part of how we think about valuations it's it's a huge topic and pretty deep topic so please think about it like that it's just one part of the frameworks that we'll use so uh, just a ba brief background about vertex right so we are about 100 folks across six funds uh, as a network and uh, pretty diversified globally, talk very regularly about topics such as this one um, and, and and investing. This is a portfolio, most of it is up on our website, invest across sectors, segments, stages, mostly series A, and that's, that's about us. But how I got started thinking about this topic, right, is if you see in the background on the bar, on the area chart, you'll see the venture capital in series A and seed in, in India. And you know our investment pace had broadly kept up. I have hidden the access titles because I didn't want to like talk about how much dollars we have deployed. But our investment pace in India has broadly kept up with the market. But this is what happened in 2021. So we got into like major down cycle in in the fund, whereas the market just completely exploded. And you know it gave me a lot of heartburn. I've spoken to a lot of people about what we were doing, what were, how were we missing some of these things. And most of it was most of this reduced investment pace uh, was an account of valuation. We're just missing good deals at incredibly crazy valuations. Obviously, it's come back up now. I've just multiplied what is the H2 number by two. Uh, but but this this basically what you're going to see the next few slides are a function of the soul searching I did in terms of how to think about valuations. Uh, but the the idea about valuation ne needs to start from the idea about what's happening in the market right so if you see this is the m2 in the us money supply and you know back in 20 2008 we used to talk about like the first troubled asset relief program tarp where they were talking about 800 billion and then in 2011 they talked about a billion dollars a trillion dollars if you see the last whatever time period uh, maybe 20 just after covid the US released about four, five trillion dollars into the economy. And there was no way the economy was handling this quite well, right? And as a result, what's happening today is this this whole correction that everyone is talking about, where wealth reduction is being talked about. Funds are losing 50% of their uh, of their market cap. BlackRock lost 1.7 trillion dollars. It's a huge number. Uh, you know, there are $10 trillion AUM fund, so $1.7 trillion in perspective is still large. Uh, and broadly in the market, uh, you know, I like to quote SaaS numbers, but this is this holds true across consumer, just tech. What was a 50x, 51x median SaaS multiple in, uh, in, in last 12 months is today about 8.8x, right? 9x. So 9x median at SaaS, which means the multiples have corrected like 80% or and so on because valuations are down slightly lesser because EPS or revenue has grown, but multiples have corrected about 80% thereabouts. And this is, you know, if you think about how this has happened, it's largely people talk about inflation and Fed raising rates, which is causing this. But to put this in perspective, the long term average of all SaaS multiples is 7.8x. Whereas today we are at about 6.9x. And if you think about the top five SaaS companies in the world, they're trading at 17.6x, right? So this puts in perspective what has happened to valuations worldwide today. Um, and and it's it's pretty interesting how we, from where we've come from where we were, right? The, the median for the market went to about 20x, uh, which is now at 6.9x. So uh, this, is, this is an interesting thing, which is leading to you know, people saying we've been here before. This is what was in 2001 as very famous website, which lived for some time called Fuck Company, which is now literally in, in a new avatar called layoffs.fii. Uh, and and we'll, we've seen this rodeo play out before, right? So, so that's a quick background. But to put this in perspective, here is the depth, right? So if you think about a billion dollar valuation for a median company, they need to generate $178 million in revenues in the next 12 months. Um, what does this mean? So here is a quick straw poll. Uh, Shruti, you can put it up if you have it ready. 
how many companies in india indian saas companies do you guys know of that have this kind of a characteristic so they got to 0 to 1 million of arr within 12 months of seed and then triple 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 right these are the characteristics of the best saas companies in the market how many of you have seen companies like this how many such companies have you seen like this i'll vote but folks can vote as well indian 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 only indian sir indian company selling anywhere in the world so you know basically 4 years for 27 million 4 years after seed yes arr these are like if you think about that the top 15% of global saas companies they follow this trajectory right within 4 years of seed they get to 27 million 25 27 you know potato potato i'll just give it a few seconds and yeah yeah let's give it a few seconds what was the distribution you can end it i guess okay you guys are pretty close i think it's two companies that have sort of gotten there right so what what does this mean right we've we've got companies that have been valued at which are so, these two companies ha huh? which are these two companies offline acha matlab ye to acha hai chalo offline ha uh yeah i don't want to say good or bad things about anyone no like we are not talking specific companies so we'll take it off offline right so let's let's look at this let's look at this 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 kind of a seed and series a construct between post covid has been very common 3 million seed at 14 pre 17 post pre launch like ppt based very common to good founders coming out of some good company that has gone public etc uh there is 14 million series a 70 pre 84 post at 400 krr we uh, we lost i was counting 12 such deals last year right where we couldn't get to this 70 million number we couldn't get to 40 but that's a separate topic right so the, these companies raised at 40 million what happens here now let's say they need to raise a series b because these companies are obviously earning a lot of money they need to raise like at a very minor up round of 140 million or 20 million round because they need at least that much they're expanding in the us putting up you know large teams etc to think about it from the perspective of raising at a 20x multiple they need to get to a 7 million arr within this year or within the next 18 months right at a 30x arr they need to get to 4 and 1/2 million dollars 30x multiple they need to get to 4 and 1/2 million dollars of 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 revenue arr in the next whatever 12 18 months i don't know any company in the country that has done that done this now we can all say that future will be better than the past but you know us market is going through a recession etc it's tough so hence thinking about valuation is super important right this is the the quick background right uh i'll i'll pause this is data which is pretty bad um and this is fine okay so any questions till now and we'll go on to valuations after this okay so i think this one everyone has seen heard before we'll move on uh the historical context to valuation of companies right they're not talking startups used to be nav and we'll touch back this touch back on this later but a little theoretical part of this is around 2020 is when this started flipping the construct of nav cash flows etc why right and it all sits in the data in 2020 in 2001 the intangible and tangible assets capex and investment in tangibles used to be almost the same like 630 billion in 2020 uh, 2001 both it dub, it went to 1 trillion for capex but intangibles investment moved to 2 trillion right and there is no way to in value intangibles on an asset value basis like on a on a uh, discounted cash flow basis or nav basis so fundamentally people have had to take a different approach to valuation and this you can think of this as a time frame when it started changing but 
before we go into valuation i think this is an important quote this is charlie munger on how he thinks about valuation and the idea is there's no formula uh just mix everything up and you will come to a conclusion on whether it's cheap or expensive i actually saw this today on twitter and so this is this is pretty interesting uh what what charlie munger says and i think that's right so so in the next few slides you'll not see a formula what you will see is just an approach to how I have started rationalizing and getting to valuations. Okay. And so for now, for the next few minutes, I'd request all of you to suspend all your belief about valuation. Don't think about how we value companies today, right? Think about this. This is a payoff diagram. So you invest $100 in a company. There's 50% chance that you recover your 100. 50% chance that you lose 120, right? Because you make other investments, etc. This is a, obviously a bad investment, right? It's There is no way you will be making this kind of an investment, right? Now, maybe I came to you and said, hey, we can do this. Let's say you have 20 million, you have $20 that you invest in a company. There is one third, there's two thirds chance that you lose all 20, but there is one third chance that you make 20, right? Now, on top of that, I give you an option to invest 80 million, 80 more, and then there is a two thirds chance that you make 80, but there is only a one third chance that you lose 100. You guys got this construct that I'm trying to build here? So there is a two step to this process of the same payout structure that you will end up arriving at, but you've broken that down. And now you have taken an option to invest more money at a later stage, having learned from what happened here, right? This is exactly what venture capital is. You take an option, you write an early, che early check, and then you, exercise that option by deploying more capital in the company. And in reality, the what we all do is a series of such option bets in companies that we invest in. Right? But you don't think of so, so one of the theoretically uh, ye achha hai, malab, logical hai, and this is what we are seeing, but Generally, dekha jai, and given that ki most people I'm guessing in this room, large number are early stage investor. Correct. So speed series A, series B, tak bhi failure rate to 60-70% hai hai, right? Correct. So, so what we think is we are optimal. So this is just a compressed version. If you blow uh -huh. this up, you will see the same venture value system play out. No, but my question to you is that I feel that this works well for value-based for investor who are investing in India because they they come at 100 million valuation and they see that they are but for does it make sense for actually the early stage investor likes of I, you my, my rationalization of this is that this actually works better for early stage investors and i'll sort of talk through a few things okay. in the next slides about it my rationalization is that this framework works actually better so the way i call it is we should think of early stage investing as writing option checks and Therefore, we should think of the constructs of option pricing and option valuation to apply to early stage investing and arrive at some fundamentals. And I have sort of tried to rationalize some of this over the last year or so and come up with some conclusions, which I'll share now. Right. Uh, any other questions, by the way? Does like this is I don't know how many of you have seen the construct like this. Uh, this is fairly new to me as well. I've been sort of thinking about this for some time now. Sorry, Piyush, when you say thinking of it as options check, do you mean to say we should think of it as approaching, not saying okay, we'll write lead checks, but in the writing small checks no, and no, multiple no, no, no. Okay. No, I'll I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that. Cool. Okay. So let, let's, let's move forward. I'll, I'll sort of try and answer some of these topics, right? So this is a contention, right? You're buying an option. Uh, you're not investing. 
okay so what is what is the value of an option it's basically the weighted average probabilistic weighted average of all potential outcomes so the idea is to come up with option come up with potential outcomes and think of valuation like a decision tree or think of outcomes like a decision tree identifying relevant outcomes and assigning probabilities to these outcomes some of you might already be, do, be doing this in your weighted average returns calculation but this is the genesis of that as far as i think about it right and so the core drivers of valuations are as follows one we are either overestimating the upsides or underestimating the downsides to get at a wrong valuation and the number one determinant in that is addressable market but i think an equally large determinant is the ability of both the manager manager is you as an investor and the and the management team to learn from this journey so to lead an investment here learn what has happened so that you can make this bet is the most important determinant of arriving at the right valuation which is what gagan partly answers your question yeah. that un that unless you do this learning in this stage of what has gone right what has gone wrong and this learning could be unit economics it, it could be market size it could be assessment about changing customer about behavior about etc hmm. yeah ability of the team to hire so unless you learn you will not be able to make a successful bet here so you know the ground leading investments is super important and so and that's one of the largest dependent uh, determinants of of writing this and so you know i was talking about about a particular investor early on the fact that people do this remotely actually doesn't gel well with this theorem you have to be on the ground you have to be spending time you have to be doing only so many investments and i'll talk about it later that allow you to learn and that is the most important determinant of success in this in this business if you think about this framework now there is a very important topic that has been talked about that an ability of a company to raise capital impacts the outcome so if a company raises n dollars and out raises its competition they will perform better than their competition actually there is a lot of work that's been done on this theory of reflexivity and i've done a lot of academic research this ability is actually out correlated by the ability of management team to execute can you repeat piyush there are so the in us literature ability of raising capital at higher and higher valuation weighs lower than the ability of the manager to execute statistically okay uh, and part of it is part of it is linked to just behavior theory part of it is linked to not building efficient businesses part of it is linked to uh just never discovering the right economics because you have too much money at your disposal which is a combination of the first two uh and this is like sort of what is called the theory of reflexivity in in company building and you guys can go and read about it later right so again if you think about early stage investing as writing option checks or uh, or doing option based valuation of these companies you will and you think about some of these ideas you will be able to make some back linkages but we are now going to talk about estimating the outcomes right the most important part about valuing companies is to be able to estimate what is the outcome that they will get to and so now we'll take a step away from valuations and discuss how do you understand and estimate these upsides and estimate these downsides and this is just like how a framework would look like right in some companies we do this pretty religiously build a management case assign a probability to it use our base case our estimate of what the case could be assign a probability etc right so this is a lot of companies will do this, this is just an excerpt from what we do 
okay so how do you estimate outcomes this is where we make a lot of mistakes um, but these are three frameworks you might want to think about to arrive at estimates of potential outcomes so one is base rates i don't know if like this is again theory that that a lot of people have written about base rates means you think about outcomes from the perspective of someone who's been there done that so for example i wrote this deck from the perspective of a value investor looking at or an option pricing expert looking at venture investing how would they think about it so base rates are super interesting way to look at it for example base rates could evaluate a company in the quick commerce segment from the perspective of another company that tried and failed it in 2014 or it could look at the pet business today from the perspective of pets.com in 2000 in the us because markets are similar etc right a pet you know whatever pet commerce business so base rates are super interesting ways to disassociate yourself the other is a thing called pre-mortem i do this very very regularly i assume that i have made this investment and then it goes back go, goes bad and then i write about what went wrong like assuming it's gone back right five years out and just gives you so many different perspectives and then one thing that we do in our partnerships uh partnership meetings etc is red teaming so one guy is supposed to pick flaws so that they're not only thinking about the upsides uh this is like a cyber security term but it's pretty well applied to venture as well but in all of this what you're trying to do is basically get to understand outcomes and the other most important part of understanding outcomes is just look at deals that you lost right this is an excerpt from my notion uh exported to excel to clean up the names of these companies um you should think about how companies do when you sort of miss them to be able to learn about what you wrote and what what you thought and what you didn't think about them and that so going back the value of a company is determined on probabilistic distribution of outcomes assessing outcomes is super important here are some frameworks to assess outcomes right so this is the option thinking of valuations i'll pause if anyone has any questions okay so now let's come to some real examples or some real business use cases so here is what like my assessment of where the market has been so we've been investing in india since 2016 a top 20 percentile saas company in india this is the pre money valuation and this is the definition of a top 20 percentile saas company uh, pre product market fit so sub million dollar back in the day sub 500k today uh, stellar team great storytelling the seed was done by a tier one vc like gagan sir uh, largely undiscovered market and very low competition so it's like it's not in a you can you know you won't ask questions around around competition and early beta customers right so this is the trend line that we were seeing till 2020 18 million dollar pre money for like pre covid time etc and then this number went up to 50 last year for the top 20 percentile company and now you know we are starting to see it get back get back to 20. first of all the reason why this this line goes up is obviously technology is deflationary there is there is just bit better outcomes happening in the world and so you get some up, uptick in better founders are coming out the quality of the top 20 percentile companies improving etc cetera, etc cetera. so there is a inflationary trend line but this 50 was an interesting thing so there are two questions here to consider first question is the fundamentals of valuation why would someone pay a 30 percent premium to the benchmark or what happens if they do and then the second which is more easier to discuss but we'll discuss that why did the benchmark move up so quickly and wildly within the last 18 odd months and why has it come back down which is a corollary to it right so 
let's start with the first question why would someone pay more than the benchmark but again i'll go back to the option theory and discuss how does the option work first right for the option to work and we know this there have to be a lot of unpredictabilities at the early stage and at its subsequent stage but at the early stage more important because if it is very obvious and if it is very predictable then then your knowledge and learning will not have any impact sorry this is an older chart this these numbers should be flipped so these outcomes have to be super unpredictable because if they are not unpredictable then you know them ab initio and so you can make the whole investment together and so then this breaks down and that, that's what tends to happen in venture these outcomes tend to be super unpredictable there is no predictability secondly because you will be writing many such options because one option will never give you the desired outcome for a fund level these options have to be completely non correlated which goes back to portfolio theory i think anand has talked about it in the past how to build a portfolio in venture because of this i think is the reason why you have to write non correlated options uh, so that you one shock or one trend does not impact the entire thing right so as a result we need to buy many many options or we need to invest in many many companies but does that mean that investing at the early stage is like buying a lottery like you know because you're just doing it like why don't why not spray and pray or why not buy n lottery tickets actually there is one fundamental reason why this does not work uh, and it's broken up into three steps first step is first step is these options need to be exclusive so you need to have the right to invest in the next round otherwise your option counts for nothing and where does the right come from it comes from the founder giving you that right and so how closely you work with a founder how closely you work with a team how well you gel together etc determines your ability to write the next round because writing the next round is more important than writing the first check actually second the need to learn between stages is important but equally important is the next guy who is coming and writing the option because like gagan said earlier there are multiple stages to this right the next guy who is coming in is also thinking of this as an option at least till series c series d so they need to learn from me they need to absorb my learning and so i need to learn a lot between stages and then third which is a constituent that very few people talk about my lps need to know what i have learned during these stages and so it becomes a multi turn business and it's a reputation business and you don't build reputation in a multi turn business by buying lottery tickets so i think this is probably my rationale using this option based theory of why spray and pray should not work or does not work and why value led outcomes or value led investing in even an early stage makes a lot more sense i'll pause any questions i know some of this is pretty new stuff that you haven't heard of but it's uh yeah okay moving on so i am here contending that there is no construct of spray and pray and lottery buying in startup investing the question was why should someone pay pay a premium or why shouldn't someone pay a premium now if you are worried about if you think about paying a premium this is what's going to happen and this is pretty obvious but there are two of three things one of two things will happen i'll own a lot less if i pay 30% premium on valuation or i'll write a larger check in both cases founders will anecdotally end up raising more money than they should they are either going to because they are diluting less in the first round if i'm paying a 30% premium they'll raise more money 
or because they've raised your first round, which is at a higher valuation, they'll raise more money. What this will result in is that dilution increases and therefore my returns will compress. So as a result, my reputation with LPs and co-investors will get impacted. And so there is going to be a bad outcome for me over a long period of time. Now, this might seem very obvious when put like this, but teams still do it, right? I exactly yeh bolne wala tha ki yeh sound to ekdam logical kar raha hai aur puri duniya yehi karti hai boss. So, and इसी को appreciate करा जाता है कि आपकी company ने कितने round raise करे हैं. So ये ये actually एक बहुत interesting चीज आप बोल रहे हो ये this is this is a good slide to put in a down cycle market if i had put this slide up like one and a half years ago then people would have been like kya bol raha chalo chhod let's let's leave and go right uh, but if you look at fund fatality rate and if you look at funds and this again is us data and if you look at funds that have paid 40% premium to market on average on their deals the fatality rate goes up 3x right uh, this is again statistical analysis put up by a fairly well renowned uh, morgan stanley research guy and this is what is going to start showing up in india so even large funds there are no large funds in india if you compare to the us benchmark right uh, but even funds that are very very large obviously leave aside the top 5 funds they can do whatever they want their franchises etc but even largest funds that are not franchises uh, franchises will will struggle because of this so while it is other side push i was discussing with someone interestingly two days back on the same thing ki yaar how come a lot of these companies and now we are seeing that there are public and private comparable of certain sector interestingly in india but fir bhi there is some amount of not mad rush but still a interest in people investing in them and it is happening so that in that discussion the outcome came of the discussion was ki yaar you need one home run and people keep on doing this keep on doing this or uh, and and if you get lucky once in a 10 years also and especially for the large fund it's a large outcome game right like for for them it's a couple of billion dollar outcome return they get and in that discussion the flipkart name there is no flipkart. company in india that has returned a fund there are two companies in india that have returned a fund a billion dollars फ्लिपकार्ट का एग्जांपल आया था उस डिस्कशन में कि यार अल्टीमेटली टाइगर मेड थ्री बिलियन आउट ऑफ फ्लिपकार्ट राइट एंड ही हैज पुट इन वन बिलियन एंड ही वाज रोलिंग अप फ्लिपकार्ट टू व्हाट एवर एक्सटेंड ही कूड एंड सो आई आई डोंट नो मतलब लाइक ऑब्वियसली वी आर अ डिफरेंट स्टेज ऑफ फंड बट मे बी द 500 मिलियन डॉलर प्लस फंड दे हैव अ डिफरेंट गेम दे फॉर देम एक्चुअली बीइंग लकी एंड एंड वंस इन अ 10 इयर्स मेक्स सेंस for them it makes sense keep, keep increasing the price and figure out a time when you can exit actually in 10 years they would have run through three funds and so the one fund that has the outcome is the only fund that will do well ah, probably <laughs> right and so again going back to my topic of multi fund multi cycle so i think there are seven, six seven funds in india to which this doesn't apply because they will forever be able to raise capital right and then there are some of these funds globally uh, where this will not apply because of the past returns and you know the potential to do better i am talking more of the general market because these six seven funds in india also don't comprise more than 35 40% of the market a lot of the market comes from the rest of, of the funds true rest of the money so uh, i'll still contend that like the approach taken by tiger and the dollars they could deploy is very different from the dollars any funds in india can deploy hmm. no i agree so 
the contention here is that offering a premium is not good it is going to catch up both on reputation and on 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 ability to raise more dollars in the future uh, right okay so now, now the easier part which is the last part of this discussion why was there an incredible reset over the last year uh, why did the 50 million dollar seed round or series a happen for pre money uh, basically there are four steps to this very simple uh, investors saw listed company valuations go up incredibly high they thought that outcomes can be much higher and so the potential scale of early stage companies on an average could go much up much further up and so entry valuations run up right it's you can think of it as more money was available and so demand supply but i think that is less of a driver as compared to the potential outcome that you could get from a company so and then many crossover investors came in and said there is no value to learning across stages which is going back to our option example now this is how public companies should get valued uh, or late stage companies should get valued i don't know many people do this there's a very well understood dcf formula uh, so present value is comprised of value discounted value of cash flows and in future years so the more in the future you get the higher dependence on rate and growth assumptions are so here is an example if you were to get a billion dollars 10 years out let's take the example of a loss deeply loss making companies which has potential to make a billion dollars of cash over 10 years or 10 years out in a zero percent rate market that's a billion dollars today but in a five percent rate market that's 670 million so there is a 37 percent decline in the value of the company straight up and then the terminal value assumption on growth is where it goes crazy because the 60 percent of present value is comprised of terminal value and which completely gets destroyed if you even bump up growth and rates by a certain hundred bits and there is enough youtube videos about how terminal value impacts present value and how growth assumptions get impacted in those i'll not bore you guys with that so to sum it all up, there is two frameworks for valuing companies. Seed companies may get valued like options, whereas later stage companies like oil refineries need to get valued via discounted cash flows. It's a continuum. So if public investors think of listed companies that are loss making and make hundreds of millions of dollars of more loss making investments trying to create option value maybe it's not the best way to do it so that's it um hi piyush um actually i had one quick question uh no. first of all thanks a lot for uh, the whole presentation i think very very interesting but um when we think about valuations i mean if you just consider it very independently for one fund i think um being very conscious of the valuation that you're offering makes a lot of sense. But uh, when you think of multiple investors which are there in the ecosystem with so much of capital or the dry powder to be deployed at early stages and now witnessing the same thing for late stage investors also that they are also coming in uh, for the six, seven funds that you talked about and kind of really taking exposure at seed series A stage for which probably offering better valuation isn't a challenge from that particular perspective because they have seen uh, tech companies getting valued at 1 trillion market cap as well, for example, Amazon. Uh, so from that perspective, now given that it's a multiple VC, multiple startups game, uh, how, how much of this particular analogy of uh, being very conscious and uh, conservative with valuation kind of really be played in the real terms? Uh, given that at the end of the day, you are just competing with other VCs uh, in a way to kind of really get the best deals in your portfolio yeah yeah so that's the holy grail abhishek thanks for thanks for the question here is the way i would think about it right you're right uh to get a billion to get a hundred million dollar valuation 
at a pre-revenue stage, you just need one guy to get convinced, right? And there is about, let's say, $30 billion of dry powder waiting to be deployed in India um, from various funds. Uh, here is the contention. I think it is... Okay, so uh, first of all, I think you can't do every deal or okay i'll talk about myself right i can't do every the way i rationalize it i can't do every deal i am also rational enough to believe that to get in at series a at 100 million valuation or at a seed or whatever right my odds of returning capital to my investors decrease significantly and if someone believes that their odds of returning capital to their investors by winning deals by paying more are higher then i don't agree with that because according to me the ability to come in at the right valuation and then stay with the company through the years outweighs the ability to write larger checks in companies that could seemingly return more capital so that's my rationale for not paying up i will also add my point abhishek that I think it's a solution. What you are saying is a practical challenge, but from India question and including first check, which we run, which works at even earlier stage, like PC stage. Yeah, in, in my view, there are deals in the market. Okay, you don't have to, you have to like figure out your strategy. If you have a patience, you may lose on some of that hot deals, which you are saying that there's a competition, but, but if you have a strategy, you will find some deals for your strategy. At least for us, it has worked in past so far. Uh, obviously, 2021 result will come after five years. Then we will be, I can say, with a more... No, no, two years. Maybe, yeah, in two years, the result will come. But I can say that, like, like this is something surprisingly, like when I became a VC first time in 2017, and being a, a, a even a smaller fund, we were... Like constrained by our fund size also not to get uh, swayed away with all this FOMO which used to happen in 1819. Maybe not to the same extent but now at least I've seen the five years enough cycle deals. You can do deals here at, at, a, at a price you want to operate at it. It's a function it's a more about discipline as Piyush mentioned multiple times in the current presentation and, and how. And I'll also add one more thing. You go back to 95, 2001, 2005, 2009, which I personally saw, 2015. Every year you go back and start reading literature, there is people complaining about too much capital. Every, every single time in every single cycle in venture, there is always too much capital. So, but there are also always funds that have sort of been disciplined and not played this game and have returned a lot better than people who have played this game. So you really have to think of it from a multiple cycle perspective. Obviously, you can't say that today we will do, you know, series A pre product market fit companies at what we were doing in 2016. That's not going to come back. The world has changed. But you can't be, you know, th there is also, uh, there is also, like Gagan said, good deals to be done in every market. Look, I think patience ka question hai, and stick to your policy strategy, you will find deals. There is another fundamental thing that, that I think we will, as a market, mature and learn. There is no way a person can be doing more than two, three deals a year. Yeah, I, I completely align with this thought. And I think what you mentioned that $20 when you invest, you have to learn to, unless and until you do a limited investment, you will not get enough time to learn. Because practically you have a two cycles of like previous year companies also moving through the same chain, right? So I agree to this and most people forget this discipline. In fact, people proudly say that I've done six deal, eight deals, 10 deals. I don't know why, but I agree with, and most good fund, if you see across the world, have this policy of limited number of deals by an investment manager. Yeah. 
I don't know if Abhijit is on this call. So, you know, his first one month, uh, this was the conversation that we were having that, you know, it's been so long, we have not done a deal. I'm like, boss, you've been here one month, then six months, then nine months, then one year. I think we can just do two deals a year as a as a team, right? As a as a partner, etc. So, oh yeah, Abhijit is here. I can see him. Yeah. Hip, you just uh, uh, one question from my end. Uh, I think this pretty much resonates with how late stage public also plays out, like your entry valuation govern your ultimate multiple that you yes. gain. There it is EPS and multiple and uh, here it's also something similar. So, and the second thing that also plays in public market is like when you deploy more in downtimes. Right? Yes. So from a fund perspective, say some, do you think it should be evened out or we shouldn't time it? Like it should be two, three deals a year or like when you see fraud, don't do it all. Uh, yes. Uh, and say do more in fifteen or I think I think I have the I have the benefit of hindsight and being pushed to not do deals in twenty twenty one by our partnership. Like you know, it's not that I was not going to write these fifty million dollar valuation checks. I was trying to maybe at forty, but you know whatever. But over the last. I I have gone through a lot of heartache over this topic. Okay, like every investor in the market who I have worked with or who I share a board with, I've gone and sat with them for two, three, four, five hours. I actually caught Anand once. I saw him on the road and I caught him and I sat down with him to get his perspective because I was going through so much heartburn. Uh, so I think if you find a thesis and stick to it, then these frothy or non frothy down markets shouldn't matter. Uh, the other part is we also have the benefit of sort of long term capital backing us at Vertex. So we can afford to take this call. Um, but different people might not be in the same boat. Right. So, but, but, I am now reconciling to the idea that if you have a thesis that you stick to, uh, deals will happen. Understood. Piyush, um, you know, you spoke about how uh, doing sorty deals can lead to reputation loss with LPs as well. Is there any, or did you face any pushback from LPs when it was a frothy market? Everybody was doing deals, everybody was getting markets, but markups, but you were holding back. Is that something you see happening when it's a frothy market, but you decide to hold back because of crisis? No, no LP will come back and tell you to hold hold back. They don't do it. It's not their job. Uh, their job is to question you on when you go back to raise money, and you you will obviously spin a story but if your story spins out of control they will your reputation gets damaged so if you're a like if there's a fund that did you know whatever 20 investments through 2021 blew through their fund in 15 months um when they were supposed to deploy it for 30 uh, you know 36 months Odds on, like again, leave aside the top tier, whatever number of funds, right? Um, some of them might still be questioned by LPs, especially by new LPs, but odds on, they will get a ton of tough questions. And so nobody will come and ask you why you're not doing deals or why you're doing deals when you're doing them. That's that's not what they do or not, not their job. Okay. So, Piyush, a counter argument to the whole hypothesis, okay, being disciplined, hmm. is what if I know 
those probabilities much better say it's a returning founder yes five saal maine kaam kiya i know in and out of that guy ha i know in and out of the market he is venturing into new correct why shouldn't then the counter argument is because my probability is my ha. learning is already done so i will give you another counter argument and there is a gentleman called ho nam who runs a fund called altos ventures i don't know if you follow him this argument comes from him right he has this paper which is called hedgehog founders okay uh, i don't know if you've read about it etc according to him there should be no returning founders right if a founder has found their true calling they should stick and do that business forever so actually i will contend that founders who are returning founders have more lacunas in their vision than you would bargain for i'm just trying to be you know provocative uh and and give you a counter argument for the sake of giving you a counter argument but this is a view that's held by a lot of value investors worldwide what was the name again head who oh, name no no the blog my name the blog the blog it's it's called it's a long old blog it's called hedgehog versus uh, fox so those who don't follow i think if you ask me my top Two three VCs which I follow, uh, like I I try to like read as all the tweets of those guys. Honam is one of them. And if you like, if you love Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett, they are like of public market. He is a Charlie Munger of a VC market. I uh, and he, all his blog and all his tweets uh, are very enriching. Uh, good 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 that you mentioned Piyush. बट कुछ एक 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 और मतलब ये काउंटर साहिल ने जो क्वेश्चन पूछा उसने तो चलो कंपनी का लॉजिक दिया बट यार मैंने मतलब आई थिंक जो अपन आज डिस्कस कर रहे हैं मैं तो काफी बार डिबेट करता हूं मतलब आई आई थिंक दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच आई बीन डिस्कसिंग इन लास्ट 5 इयर्स एवरी फ्यू मंथ्स विद इंटरनली एट आईक्यू एंड एक्सटर्नली विद माय फ्रेंड्स एंड व्हाट आई सी आधे लोगों का व्यू जो आता है एंड इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दिस यंग फोक्स टू नो इज कि यार वन साइड इफ यू सी इफ वी कंसीडर वीसी एज अ hedging business and like we have to figure out ki can we uh, like can, does this stock will appreciate in future for some reason like in fact sometimes we discuss deals yaar ye dhanda to acha nahi hai founder bhi bekar lag raha hai but yaar ye paisa to raise kar lega and and we end up because of maybe iq value system we pass those deal and we have seen it kiar at least series b c ho jata hai 200 300 million pahunch jati hai ab so agar we discuss this role, agar main apna business yahi samjho ki yaar mujhe to mere fund ko return bana ke dena hai तो आई डोंट केयर अबाउट कि अच्छा बिजनेस बन रहा है कि नहीं बन रहा है यार मुझे तो फंड रेजिंग मशीन चाहिए या ऐसा आइडिया चाहिए जो फंड रेज करेगा मैं उसमें इन्वेस्ट करूं और और हम हम पैसे निकाल लें वी हैव डिस्कस दिस इन द पास्ट एग्जीक्यूशन नीड स्टोरी टेलिंग फॉर लंच एवरीडे राइट सो व्हाट यू व्हाट व्हाट वी एक्चुअली वांट इज फाउंडर्स हु आर एक्सेप्शनल एग्जीक्यूटर्स हु वी कैन टीच स्टोरी टेलिंग बिकॉज़ दैट्स व्हाट वी डू वेरी वेल दैट्स व्हाउ वी थिंक अबाउट इट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सेकंड मोर इंपॉर्टेंट people who are raising hot money so people who are raising good money from respected investors were always raising at respectable valuations till they got to like you know billion dollar valuation and then hot money obviously comes in but people who are raising hot money there is very high probability that we are going to start seeing them start to collapse now uh we saw okay let's not do gossip uh but you know i have a list we'll discuss the list when we meet so it's like you said it plays out over 5 years this is a discussion that started kicking up storm over the last 30 odd months just before covid was i remember the first time i saw a saas deal getting bid up to 25 million pre um at 300k arr was december 2019 in thereabouts the first time i have seen such a deal like and so i i mark that deal uh, as the start of the crazy bubble right and then in quick succession three deals happened the seeds were done by a uh, marky indian vc india based global vc Uh, all three deals 
in two of them tiger wrote a series a check um 30 months out we saw the companies recently tough uh one of them is actually a good friend and who privately said that i hope i i wish i don't i hope i don't make this mistake again he's starting up again and i hope i had not done this to raise this money i hope i had got a because he had op- not not from us he had an offer from another disciplined investor and he turned that down so we'll see so so by the way so honam ka ye tweet tha and usme he answered this question which which i'm like i i i asked just now ki yaar you it's a choice of what type of investor you want to be in so are you an investor who want to just look at ki yaar chalo meko to प्राइस बढ़ने से मतलब है स्टॉक का प्राइस बढ़ेगा आई एम इन्वेस्टिंग इन दोस कंपनीज एंड आई विल एग्जिट एट सम टाइम और यू आर अ इन्वेस्टर हु हैज अ फिलॉसफी की आर आई वांट टू इन्वेस्ट इन द कंपनी व्हिच आर बिल्डिंग एक्चुअली ग्रेट बिजनेसेस एंड व्हिच आर डिफेंसिबल इन ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ एनवायरमेंट बी इट डाउनटर्न बी इट अ बूम मार्केट एंड ही ही सेड दैट माय चॉइस इज ऑन द लेटर साइड सो सो दैट इज व्हाट ही सेड एंड एक्चुअली दैट वाज आई थिंक द बेस्ट आंसर व्हिच आई गॉट व्हिच गिव्स मी अ पीस एज एन इंडिविजुअल एंड आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू हैव टू फिगर आउट your same answer that what type of investor you want to be in i think there is nothing right and wrong in this it's a it's a call which you have to take as an individual yeah i also say you have to you have to the way i rationalize it is that i'm going to play this game for long time right i am i'm here for a long time whether whatever happens i don't want to wake up tomorrow and worry about things that will give me sleepless nights i have more things to worry about that so being disciplined helps me sleep better at night okay guys this has been good we will sanitize the slides and send them over to you later thank you very much thanks thanks so much piyush thanks again thanks everyone uh, thank, thank you everyone thank you piyush